A Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, originally scheduled at this time, will instead begin right after the following CBS News special. I'm deeply troubled that the implementation of a policy aimed at resolving a truly tragic situation in the Middle East has resulted in such controversy. A secret arms deal with Iran. Millions of dollars diverted, perhaps illegally, to the Nicaraguan Contras. A foreign policy and a White House in public disarray. This is a CBS News special report. The White House in turmoil. From CBS News headquarters in New York, here is Dan Rather. Good evening. Republicans and Democrats alike are calling it a crisis, some call it a scandal, others a tragedy. Today's startling revelation that up to $30 million from the secret arms deal with Iran ended up in the hands of anti-government forces in Nicaragua, the Contras. But beyond that, there is a growing public perception that something is very wrong in the White House when it comes to foreign policy. A president who says he's unaware of money going to the Contras. A president who says he knew nothing of the first arms shipments to Iran until after the fact. An administration split into competing camps. And perhaps most important, serious questions about who is running the foreign policy of the United States. And perhaps most troubling for President Reagan, today's developments are just the latest in a series of foreign policy setbacks. Bob Schieffer has more about that. We must not yield okay, to the terrorist demands and invite more terrorism. We cannot reward their grisly deeds. We will not cave in. There has never been a question about where Ronald Reagan is coming from on foreign policy. He wants America to stand tall, whether the adversary is a terrorist or a superpower. But for this president, putting foreign policy ideas into practice has never come easy. A succession of advisors have come and gone. But the president has often been frustrated in foreign policy, and nothing has been more vexing than dealing with terrorism. I'm as frustrated as anyone. I've, I've pounded a few walls myself when I'm, I'm alone about this. It is frustrating. It may have been this frustration that led the president to skirt his own chain of command as he tried to get the hostages out of Lebanon. But whatever the case, the secret deal for arms with Iran is part of the pattern of hip pocket diplomacy that has marked the president's second term. Critics say the arms control proposals the president discussed with Soviet leader Gorbachev in Iceland were not fully explored by government experts and that some of the proposals caught the military joint chiefs of staff by complete surprise. The so-called disinformation plan against Libyan leader Gaddafi, drawn up by the National Security Council, apparently caught most of the administration unaware, this causing the State Department's top that, uh, spokesman uh, to resign in protest. Uh, Experts say opting for the unconventional route is often most tempting when dealing in the shadowy world of terrorism. But they point out such tactics carry an obvious danger. In beating the system, you do run the danger of avoiding the control and the checks that the system imposes. And things can get out of control. For Mr. Reagan, taking the unconventional route may also result in the worst political trouble of his presidency. Because today in the White House press room, they were asking the kinds of questions that haven't been asked since Watergate. Exactly what did the president know and when did he know it? And perhaps only the president knows the answer to that. Because today he said in effect that he was just one of a growing Washington group, the expanding collection of government officials who claim they didn't know the full story on the secret arms deal with Iran. Dan? Thank you, Bob. In New York tonight, former United States Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, who is also a former National Security Advisor to President Richard Nixon. Dr. Kissinger is with us live. Good evening, Dr. Kissinger. Evening. What is the most important question right now? Well, the most important question is to how, to, how the administration can organize itself to go on with the conduct of foreign policy and to seize the opportunities which until the end of the summer were within their grasp. Uh, it seems to me they have to uh, restore leadership to the conduct of foreign policy. To the, uh, they have to uh, get discipline into the administration. And then, in fact, we were in a rather strong negotiating position. We're still in a strong negotiating position. 
we are our own worst enemies and uh, fundamentally the Reagan presidency can still be marked with very signal successes uh, if we get our act together. Dr. Kirsten, do you believe that President Reagan did not know about the first arms shipments and do you believe that he didn't know about the money going to the Contras? Uh, he has said he didn't know and his credibility is extremely high and I, I trust his veracity. Do you have any difficulty believing it? Well, I have difficulty believing that, uh, that Colonel Norris did this on his own. Uh, so I believe that they must have assumed that somebody in authority uh, agreed with what they were doing. Does this all have all the earmarks, Dr. Kissinger, one of those operations in which you say, uh, in one way or another, go do what you have to do, man, go do what I want you to do. If you get caught, you're on your own and I'll have to drop you. Except that is not the president's style. I believe he genuinely uh, did not know. Uh, I believe also that Admiral Poindexter and Colonel Noah thought they were carrying out the general philosophy uh, of the administration. And I think the basic problem is that this administration has fragmented itself into a group of self-willed uh, departments, agencies that operate more or less on their own and then hope that the president will pull them out because of his popularity in case of a crisis. And sooner or later, this was going to, to run into difficulties. But we should keep in mind that the fundamental relationships in the world are still favorable to us. But Dr. Kissinger, what about the military joint chiefs of staff? Uh, are they not supposed to know where more than 2,000 U.S. missiles were? Well, but I tell you, I have great difficulty when the chairman of the joint chiefs says he ran across this by accident. Uh, now, of course, they should know where the 2,000 toes are, but when they run across some information, are they then, why don't they go to the president and say this is an art procedure and we have serious doubts about it? And similarly, other departments that say they were not informed, were they not informed because they did not want to know, knowing that something was going on, or were they deliberately kept in the dark? If they did not inform themselves of something that they knew was going on, I do not think they were serving their country. And it shows that they were more concerned with protecting themselves than with uh, defining a national policy. So I think when this whole structure is reorganized, as I believe it has to be, uh, those issues ought to be addressed. Because I cannot believe that the president would have done the things that were done if the real choices had been put before him. And somewhere in the system that broke down. Uh, and the national security staff, on the one hand, operated too much on detail, and on the other, did not present the alternatives adequately to the president. And the departments, in my view, were too much concerned with their relative prerogatives than with the overall national purpose. Thank you very much, Dr. Henry Kissinger. Now, standing by live for our CBS News special report, White House correspondent Bill Plant and our State Department correspondent Bill McLaughlin. First, uh, Bill Plant. Bill, have we heard the last of the disclosures? Dan, I don't think so. There's almost certainly more, as has been suggested already. It's hard to believe that Oliver North and Poindexter were the only ones who knew exactly what was happening. There are certainly others. It's been suggested to us that the administration believes there were people in the CIA who knew what was going on. I'm sure we'll find out that there are more who know about what was happening. What's more, Dan, it's hard to believe that George Schultz can escape this. This is a separate issue, apart from the revelations about the money to the Contras. But the friction between the State Department and the White House has gotten so serious that it is very hard to believe that Schultz will not, at some point in the near future, have to leave. In fact, there is at least one person here who asserts flatly that the deal is already cut, that Schultz and the President have agreed that he will leave after two or three months. We can't confirm that absolutely, but in the light of what's happened here in the last couple of weeks, it sounds right. Uh, what about the view from the State Department, Bill McLaughlin? Uh, George Schultz out? Well, Schultz's resignation is on the president's desk. I don't think he's out now. I don't think he's out for the next three months. Something has to be done much more important now, Dan. Schultz has to get out there and make U.S. foreign policy trustworthy and believable again. And he has an uphill struggle on his hands. But most importantly, the CIA and the Defense Department and the NSC will now be answerable to the State Department on the Iran policy. So temporarily, at least, George Schultz is a winner. That's clear. Bill Plant, what about Donald Reagan, the White House Chief of Staff, who's sometimes seen as a kind of assistant or deputy president 
Does he last or not? I think he does, Dan. He is blamed by a lot of people outside the White House for the staff system that he has created. But it appears at this point that Ronald Reagan retains full faith and confidence in him. They seem to be very close. Ronald Reagan trusts Donald Reagan. It seems likely that he will stay. He has, however, created a staff system that reports to nobody but him and which has been faulted for lack of professionalism and expertise, particularly in dealing with foreign affairs. Bill McLaughlin, very quickly, what has been the most damaging thing about all of this to American foreign policy? The fact, Dan, that our allies, the moderate Arab states, and even our adversaries like the Soviet Union either think we're amateurs or don't trust us. That's real damage. Thank you very much, Bill McLaughlin, the State Department, and Bill Plant at the White House. In a moment, we'll take a look at the role that Israel played in the arms deal. I can't believe you talked me into this. Admit it. It's just too good to resist. Mm, you're right, Saul. What's it called? Fruit and... And? Forget the fiber and fruit and fiber. You're gonna love it just for the Only fruit and fiber has all these lush combinations, overflowing with sweet fruit, fresh, crunchy nuts, and surrounded with the highest fiber flakes. This is the greatest. You're gonna love it just for the taste. Post fruit and fiber cereal. Tastes so good you forget the fiber. Sometimes your skin gets so dry you can scratch the word dry right on your hand. And the drier your skin, the more you need Vaseline Intensive Care Lotion. It soothes and starts healing dry skin on contact. That's today's Vaseline Intensive Care. A waxy stick for chap lips. Wax is for candles. Vaseline Lip Therapies for lips. It's better because it covers more completely. It not only heals, it helps prevent chapping. With Vaseline Lip Therapy, you may never get chap lips again. The last thing U.S. allies in the Middle East want to hear is that the U.S. sent arms to Iran, and Israel's involvement only makes matters worse. That could be why Israel did its best today to distance itself from this whole deal. Don McNeil reports. By helicopters late at night and by cars, Israel's top political and military leaders gathered at the Prime Minister's office, a crisis meeting generated by the startling news from Washington. It forced the government here to admit for the first time that it had sold defensive arms and parts to Iran upon the request of the United States. But then Israel washed its hands. The payment for this equipment was made directly by an Iranian representative to a Swiss bank in accordance with instructions from the American representative. These funds did not pass through Israel. The government of Israel was, was surprised to learn that supposedly a portion of these funds was transferred to the contras. Don, uh, what impact is this going to have on the future of U.S.-Israeli relations? The first major concern here, Dan, is about President Reagan. Israelis are now wondering if he will be able to function as generously as he has in the past towards Israel. He has been a great friend of Israel. They're worried about if he will be able to continue in that role. Secondly, they're worrying very much about losing Secretary of State George Shultz, also a friend of Israel. Thirdly, and more practically, I think, they're worried about Congress, which is why they're saying tonight they did not touch that money, because if they had, they would have been legally in contravention of the U.S. Congress. So they're worried right now also about future military aid, future arms deals. They have a deal right now to sell uh, up to 15 Kapir jets to Honduras. That's in the pipelines, but it needs U.S. approval. They're worrying if deals like that will go on as smoothly and as quickly as they have in the past. Thank you, Don McNeil. In any congressional investigation of the arms deal, two senators will play important parts, and they are with us live tonight from Washington. Democrat Sam Nunn, who will head the Influential Armed Services Committee in the new Senate, and Republican Dave Durenberger, who is chairman of the Intelligence Committee in the outgoing Senate. Uh, first, Senator Nunn, do you believe that Colonel North was the only person who knew what was going on? Well, from what uh, Attorney General Ed Meese said today, the answer to that is no, he was not the only one. Uh, Admiral Poindexter evidently knew, and perhaps some other people knew. The question is how direct that knowledge was, whether they really knew all the facts or whether they knew only a partial story. But he was not a sole operator, in my view. 
Do you believe President Reagan when the president says he didn't know? I have no reason to have anything but trust in the president. Uh, I think it's unfortunate when he does not know something like this that's this important, but uh, certainly I have no reason not to believe the president of the United States. Senator Durenberger, you're ahead of a committee that has given new oversight authority, was given new oversight authority several years ago. What happened? Clearly you didn't oversee it. Well, <clears throat> there's two ways to look at oversight. One is uh, it's an opportunity for the president in advance to get some outside advice. In this case, he didn't uh, take advantage of that opportunity. Uh, the, but the second thing the oversight system does is uh, it sets off an alarm system. And in this case, uh, uh, I think that alarm system went off, and uh, we are now in the process of uh, uh, finding out exactly what went wrong. And the president is in the process of learning something about the value of congressional oversight. Senator Durenberg, do you believe that the president didn't know, that his White House Chief of Staff, Donald Reagan, didn't know, that the military Joint Chiefs of Staff didn't know, that we were shipping thousands of missiles to the Iranians? Um, I, I believe the president didn't know, and I believe most of the people that you named uh, uh, didn't know. Some of them may not have had reason to know or, or even ask questions. But I think uh, uh, Ali North uh, is not a lone ranger. Uh, he, uh, I don't think he was operating strictly on his own, and I think uh, there are still some undisclosed uh, sources that gave him at least an amber light on this uh, operation, if not a green light. Senator Nunn, are you concerned that the military Joint Chiefs of Staff didn't know about this, or do you think they didn't know? Well, I think that uh, from everything I know, they did not know. The question is one of who should have known if they had been diligent in the exercise of that duty. I think we have to distinguish, though, between the delivery of money to the Contras, which the President uh, clearly declared he did not know, and the question of delivery of missiles to Iran, which the President declared forthrightly that he did know. Uh, Senator Nunn, uh, can you in any way talk to Colonel North? It seems to me he's the person his claim knows all the answers. Why not get him up, ask him the, the questions, and get the answers? Well, Chairman Durenberger here has got the reins until January in terms of the Intelligence Committee. It's my hope that he will work with uh, com incoming uh, Chairman Dave Boren and the Intelligence Committee will do a very thorough study of this beginning, uh, I think it's already underway. The Armed Services Committee will help wherever we can. I don't think we're the committee of primary jurisdiction. Uh, is he untouchable, Senator Durenberger, because he worked at the White House? That, no, he's not. Uh, it may be that he gets some advice of counsel uh, uh, that'll make it more difficult for us, but I think we intend to talk to Ali as well as a lot of other people who've been involved uh, in the Iranian situation and, uh, and those that have been involved with regard to Nicaragua. What is the most damaging thing that has happened to U.S. credibility in foreign policy? It's, um, it is the way in which the, uh, the policy is set, the way in which the president makes decisions, and whether he makes all the decisions. Uh, and that's also the good news, because uh, you can turn this thing around if, if this president makes it clear uh, uh, for what he's going to take responsibility and uh, who is going to be responsible for a lot of the other things that he can't take uh, responsibility for. Senator Nunn, what about all the laws that apparently have been violated in this? Uh, do you expect someone to face criminal trial as a result of this? Well, this is going to be a very important investigation by Attorney General Meese. It seems to me that clearly the, the law of Congress that says that non-lethal uh, or lethal aid should not be delivered to the Contras has been broken. Uh, that doesn't carry with it, as far as I know, criminal sanctions. There's another law here that says that U.S. taxpayers' money should uh, not be used for purposes that are not authorized. The question here is, uh, Dan, whether this was U.S. money or not, or whether it was Israeli money, and that would turn on the question of whether Israel was our agent or whether they were an independent contractor. So the Attorney General has got his hands full, and I hope he will uh, conduct a thorough and, and very independent and objective uh, investigation. Mr. Durenberger, what should the public be concentrating on now? What should the person in the living room saying, what's all this about be looking for over the next few days? Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, the way the President handles this, and uh, uh, Sam and I both saw it this morning at the, uh, at the White House. This president is not only uh, concerned about the past, but he's deeply concerned about the future. And he's not only concerned about himself, but he's concerned about uh, how America is perceived in all of this. Uh, he acted with, uh, with uh, more than appropriate uh, openness in, in taking all of this to the American public. If he continues that process, and if he's also open with the uh, Congress on future policies, uh, I, don't, I think he'll get over this fairly quickly. Quickly, Senator Nunn, do you agree the president's been all that open and forthcoming? No, I think what we've had here is creeping candor, and I hope that it will all come out now and uh, we'll put all the facts uh, in their proper perspective. I also believe he's got to 
quickly take action to say that the National Security Council will not be engaged in operations. Uh, and I think he's got to clearly designate if Secretary Schultz is going to stay. He's got to say uh, clearly that Secretary Schultz can speak for this administration in foreign policy. We cannot afford a vacuum in foreign policy for the next several months. Thank you, Senators. Thank you. Standing by on Capitol Hill is our veteran CBS News correspondent, Phil Jones. Phil, is, uh, is the question in Congress whether the government is paralyzed when it comes to foreign policy? Well, Dan, I think that uh, ordinarily you would expect the Democrats to very, be very gleeful right now that uh, the president is on the mats, but you're not hearing this. So you have just heard one Democratic senator, Sam Nunn, talking, and I think most of the Democrats and Republicans up here are quite worried about the damage that has been done to the nation, to Ronald Reagan, and to the presidency itself. And as Senator Nunn said earlier today, the fact is that this country and the Congress uh, cannot afford a crippled presidency for the next two years. As far as Republicans are concerned, they're disappointed, they're furious, they're devastated because many of them have been noticing this, what they think is an arrogance building within the Reagan administration on defense and foreign policy matters for, for quite some time. They have been warning that this arrogance could lead to some major scandal. And quite frankly, what you have here is just sort of the ultimate in what many of these people have been seeing for quite some time since Ronald Reagan came into the White House. The Reagan presidency has continually gone sort of around Congress. They have not come up and consulted before most of the major operations were launched. They have fought them on defense matters all the way. And now you have the problem. And unless you have Congress included in the takeoffs, when you come to some rough landings like this, you're going to find that Congress is not with the presidency. They're worried. Thanks, Phil. When we come back, Mike Wallace will be here with some of the questions that have yet to be answered. Staying fit takes two kinds of exercise. Exercise for your outside and exercise for your inside with Kellogg's Bran Flakes. Kellogg's Bran Flakes are loaded with fiber to exercise your insides as only fiber can. Plus, Kellogg's is the only Bran Flakes that gives you a full day supply of iron in each delicious bowl full. So if you plan to stay fit, don't just go halfway. Get Kellogg's Bran Flakes. They help keep you fit inside. I live naturally, always have. So. When my doctor said Metamucil keeps you regular naturally, I gave it a try. Metamucil's fiber is my doctor's choice. It's a true natural laxative. So these days, I'm my regular self, thanks to Metamucil. Trust is a delicate thing, not easy to come by. So knowing more doctors trust Metamucil makes me feel better than ever. Natural fiber Metamucil. It's tried, true, and trusted. One of the many unanswered questions in this whole story is what happened to the money said to have been funneled to the Contra rebels. The leader of the largest Contra army, Adolfo Calero, says he doesn't know anything about that money. We know absolutely nothing about the money that has been referred to uh, today. I am denying that uh, we have received uh, this money or that we have used this money that uh, is being uh, talked about. A Contra leader who is a close friend and a confidant of Lieutenant uh, Colonel North, whose name has uh, played such a role in this very bizarre development of uh, arms to Iran, money laundered through Swiss banks, and allegedly, supposedly, reportedly reaching the Contras. Mike Wallace has been looking into the background of this man, this Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North. Mike? Dan, the shadowy figure we've been hearing about at the center of today's extraordinary revelations is Oliver North, a Marine Lieutenant Colonel seldom photographed, never interviewed, a Reagan true believer who today was fired from his job at the Reagan White House. Who is Oliver North? A Naval Academy graduate in 1968, North chose the Marine Corps. He fought in Vietnam and was decorated there. He came to the White House staff in 1981 as an aide to Robert McFarlane, then the President's National Security Advisor. In 1983, he did most of the White House staff work for the invasion of Grenada. Later that year, he planned and supervised the mining of Nicaraguan harbors by the CIA. After the Congress cut aid to the Nicaraguan Contra rebels in 1984, 
Colonel North put in motion a private network to funnel arms and cash to the Contras. And it was in pursuit of that that he cut the deal for Israeli agents to funnel Iranian money, somewhere between 10 and 30 million dollars worth, to those Contra rebels. Question. Who gave North the license to deal with the Israelis and the Iranians? Who gave him the charter in the name of the Reagan White House to do the deal? And most intriguing of all, how much did President Reagan know of all this? Friday, Attorney General Meese said earlier today, the president knew nothing. So we are told that three military men used to carrying out orders from their superiors failed to tell the commander in chief what they were up to. Former National Security Advisor, ex-Marine Lieutenant Colonel Robert McFarlane, knew what was going on. So did the President's most recent NSC advisor, Admiral John Poindexter, and Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North. He was the action officer dubbed the gun runner in the basement of the White House. The Attorney General said today that he is waiting for all the facts before he makes a judgment. It would seem that Oliver North is the man with many of those facts, and he was hung out to dry today by the Reagan White House. His facts, his public testimony, is what the country is now waiting for. Thank you, Mike. And so tonight, a lot of still unanswered questions in this still unfolding and bizarre situation of a White House in turmoil and U.S. foreign policy in disarray. But beyond the many details yet to be learned, the larger question, was our constitutional system of checks and balances violated by secret arms for the Ayatollah Khomeini's Iran? secret dollars for the Contras? And will our constitutional system of checks and balances serve us again, as it has so well for two centuries, by getting to the truth and curbing any arrogance of power wherever and no matter how high it may go? For CBS News, Dan Rather in New York. Good night. Morning is your time The earth wakes up with you Always feel that spark of life in everything that you do Grape Nuts For you, it's as natural as the morning No sugar added, no preservatives Just an honest, nutty crunch Post Grape Nuts cereal You know when you have it good Yes, you know when you have it good I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV <laughs> If your child had a cough, she'd get just what the doctor orders But for your cough, you play doctor at home even trying medicine you originally bought for your child. You need one of the adult formulas from Vicks. For the coughs adults get, with the strength adults need. Formula 44 for coughs, 44D for coughs with congestion, and 44M for coughs with congestion and a raw, irritated throat. The adult formulas. You can't buy anything more effective. The adult formulas from Vicks, of course. The White House in Turmoil has been a special report from CBS News. Schmidt, president of Yale University. One of the important early actions of the first Congress was the drafting and submission to the states of the first ten amendments to the Constitution, known as the Bill of Rights. These amendments protect the rights of individuals from the power of the federal government, but they might never have been written were it not for the leadership of James Madison and the pressures from several states which had ratified the Constitution only on the condition that such a Bill of Rights be swiftly enacted into law. We the people are celebrating the 200th year of our Constitution. Carrie is so very... Different. It doesn't feel like ordinary lotion. It's concentrated. Carrie is so very... Rich in emollients. It even made my rough elbows and heels soft again. Carrie is so very... Because of the preceding CBS News special, the Bugs Bunny Thanksgiving Diet will not be presented this evening. Instead, stay tuned for a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, next on CBS. Experience the supernatural. A TV image so lifelike, it fills the room with its presence. With stereo TV sound. And CompuFocus video optics. The Panasonic Omniseries Color TV. It's a phenomenal experience. Mommy! Mommy! From Panasonic, just 
slightly ahead of our time. Turn someone upside down with the new limelight too. The swatch with diamonds. Swatch. Get it at Macy's. Shake up at the White House at 11.